Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a real uh, treat for you today, and I mean that like quite literally. Um, joining me today is AJ with uh, from the Candle Chef. He's the owner of the Candle Chef. So, if you many of you probably already know who AJ is, and if you're not or you're new to the channel, then uh, just let me tell you a little bit about AJ real quick. He, like I said, he owns the Candle Chef, which focuses mostly on dessert candles. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So, so I'll let AJ introduce himself real quick, and then. Uh, we're going to get into this video. And, and like I said, we're going to ask him some questions, talk a little bit about it, maybe get a little bit of uh, some products or photos, demonstrations, something, whatever AJ wants to talk about. So I'm super excited about doing this video. I've known AJ for a while. He's been a follower of the channel. We're in some of the same groups together. So I'm super excited about this. Like I said, it'd be a real treat. So with that being said, AJ, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, that's what actually, that's actually where I met you, uh, Wade, is the DIY Beginners channel, uh, Jess channel. My name is AJ. I'm the candle chef and I make desserts. Uh, I make candles that, that look and smell like real desserts. I've got a list of questions and I, and we'll get to some of more information about your business and your products and more about you. But uh, most importantly, the first thing I want to just do is I guess, ask you really, what is a dessert candle? Like how, how do you make a dessert candle for people that are, it's very new to. In my Patreon, I do a dessert candle school and I teach actually teach people how to do this. With these candles, the only limitation is your imagination. Literally, you can like my my inspiration, I go out to Pinterest and I'll do a food search and I'll look at all the desserts and all the the cakes and pies and, and cupcakes and all the, the foods and, and even drinks that I absolutely love to drink, eat, and smell, and I will actually figure out how to recreate that out of wax. And there's, um, it, it was, it was a process. Yeah. No, it I've seen a, a lot of your, I've seen your work over time and uh, it's really impressive that there's, there are other people obviously that specialize in dessert candles. And, and typically you find most candle makers either do dessert candles and dessert candles only or they do other types of candles. Cause like you said, it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of practice to get things to look that real. Uh, the concept of a dessert candle is not that difficult, but you're trying to get the perfect look and the smell to match and then have it still perform well, because if it, you know, yes. I, that's yes. the tricky part is it's, it's difficult enough to wick a jar candle properly uh, depending on whatever exactly. you're using. And so just imagine trying to do odd shapes and sizes though. It's not really my <laughs> realm. And I should say that real quick before we go any further. I was super excited about this because I've dabbled a little bit in it when I first started and I enjoyed it. But then my other business kind of took off and I just, I was like, I can't do this. I don't have time. So it totally yeah. backburnered. I never went back to it. Um, and so that's not my specialty. That's not my realm. And so I'm so happy that you, this is your, your niche. This is what you do. I'm so happy to have you here on the channel. So I appreciate that. First of all. So this is how I got started. I was in customer service. I lost my job and I was over at my sister's house and she goes, and I, I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? She's like, you're artistic, you're creative. You have an imagination like, like no other. You should do something uh, artsy. So she actually uh, got a little Amazon kit and uh, of uh, for candles. And I did like 10 container candles. I've literally only done about maybe 20 to 30 container candles in my life. I started out with those, those container candles. I tried to sell them on Etsy. When I was out on Etsy, putting those, those container candles on Etsy, I saw somebody that did a pie candle. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, that is really cool. So wait a minute, if you can do pies, can you do cupcakes? Can you do like all this other stuff? And I didn't see any of that uh, out there. I actually went to the owner of uh, that company that did the pie candle. And I asked, asked them, I was like, hey, do you do classes? Can I? Can you tell me some secrets? And she goes, nope, they're trade secrets. I'm not giving them out. Yeah. And at that moment, that very moment, I decided, I was like, okay, not only am I going to learn, I'm going to teach myself how to make dessert candles yep. and then uh, pass it on to other people. And that's, that's, and pay it forward. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And that's part of what makes it, 
it's just so enjoyable to see other people doing well is when those people are also like like to give back to the community to everyone else and just teach and pay it forward uh, i mean that that's i know it's a different type of candle but that's uh that was my inspiration in the channel too is i started my channel to share the stuff that no one else wanted yes. to share and just to have fun and like build a community because you make a lot of great friends and, and partners and it's just a great community once you get involved. And I really like that a lot of people are willing to share so much. So I, I'm, I'm Man, super stoked. Yeah. Before I started doing candles, uh, I had like, I was, I was that guy that only had like one or two friends and that was on purpose. <laughs> uh, once I started making candles and started getting into the, the candle making groups and the community and started asking questions, they would answer the questions, we'd collaborate, we'd, we'd uh, share our problems, our, our questions and stuff like that. But the candle community is one of the best communities out there. I absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. I completely agree. So you want me to go ahead and start shooting off some questions or do you want to, do you want to give us a little bit more, I guess, of a visual understanding of, of how to do this? Yes. So for the past hour, I've actually been prepping. So I want, I want to show you awesome. what, what dessert candles are. And I'm going to, there's literally limitless things that you can do with dessert candles. And one of the things like I have, I broke them down into five categories cupcakes and wax melts, pies, uh, pies and cobblers, uh, cheesecakes and cakes, drink candles, like tropical drink candles, and then uh, Sundays and desserts. And I actually teach all five of those. And one of the easiest ones to get started with is cupcakes. All you have to do is get one of these little silicone cups from uh, baking cups from Amazon. They're like four or five dollars on Amazon. So yeah, let me go ahead and, and show you what I got set up. I'm going to show you a couple cupcakes and I'm going to show you my, my process of, of getting embeds, which is uh, fruits that you embed into your candle. I actually do my own silicone molds. When I first started dessert candles, the process was extensive and I actually had to teach myself how to do everything, but I do everything from the silicone molds to, to painting the embeds to the, to the painting. So you make all your components and everything that goes into it. Yes. Okay. Every, every, every system, every little technique, every process uh, was painstakingly <laughs> learned over the years. All right, so I'm going to show you a little demonstration on how to do cupcakes. Um, so I got these little silicone baking cups from Amazon and the wax that I use for the bottoms is a, I, I usually use two waxes for the bottoms and it's um, paraffin based. I, I sometimes use all paraffin, but all paraffin has a like a translucent color to it. So I, I sometimes use 6028, which is a, a paraffin soy mix. I fill up the bottom with with the pair with the sixty twenty eight. Let that set. I usually do about eight to nine percent fragrance in it. And these three that I'm going to be doing, I have cherry, I have strawberry, and I have raspberry. In light of uh, the holiday season, uh, 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 Valentine's Valentine's Day is coming up. So I did. I'm going to do these red and white. I'll show you in just a second how I made the embeds. Great. But uh, you can ask any questions you want while, uh, while I'm doing this too. Uh, wait, since it's a freestanding candle, I usually use these wooden wicks uh, to make my little wick hole. They're little wooden skewers gotcha. that I've okay. cut cut down. Gotcha. And they make a, a perfect wick hole. And I don't uh, want to do the wicks yet. I want to do the wicks after I do the piping. And the piping is the cool part. Yeah. This is this is one of the best parts about dessert candles is 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 whipping wax and then hand piping it because then you can actually put anything you any decoration that you want into the piping. Yeah, at that point it's very similar to like dessert baking that you would see on TV shows. This is exactly like a food class. <laughs> yeah, it, it really you wouldn't know that you're making candles if if you didn't know better. So 
So I got my four for four in uh, a little two pound pot. And I'm actually gonna use a regular um, hand mixer. I let this set for about 60 minutes um, to get to the right temperature and consistency. And the temperature right now is right about 100 degrees. Okay. And for, and for those that are really new to this type of candle making or candle making in general, 444 is a all soy wax. And AJ, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm assuming with dessert candles, you really, you need a little bit of soy because it allows you to whip it and fluff it a little bit. Plus it, it, you have longer time to work with it. You're looking for that kind of texture, correct? Exactly. Uh, soy wax, actually, it, uh, it takes the longest amount of time to harden out of all the waxes, paraffins, parasoys, it takes the longest amount. And with whipping wax, you have to get it through the tip of the piping bag. Um, and it's a really small, small tip. So you have about a seven minute window to pipe your wax before it gets too hard to pipe. And soy wax is the best uh, wax to use that. And out of all the soy waxes, um, 4 for 4 is, is my preference because it has the highest oil content. And that oil content makes, makes uh, whipped cream look you know, rich and creamy. I let it set for about, about an hour. And it's uh, like a consistency of, uh, I tell my students, uh, dry mashed potatoes. <laughs> And there we go. I'd be nervous taking this stuff to like shows and events and people asking for spoons to try it. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I was at a flea market, uh, for everybody that walked by and says, oh my gosh, I could eat that. Yeah. You're making me hungry. <laughs> it literally looks like whipped icing. When I'm doing like uh, the chocolate cupcakes, um, sometimes I even forget <laughs> that it's wax. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't lick this. Oh yeah, I can't lick the beaters on this. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I would. I might actually mess up and do that. Just don't make anything out of peanut butter, or I'm in trouble. Oh goodness, yeah, yeah. The fragrances that I use, uh, I like to add. I like to infuse different fragrances. I like to do like buttercream um, mixed with the fragrance. So if it calls for eight percent fragrance, I'll do like four percent uh, buttercream and then four percent uh, strawberry. Another one that I like to infuse is strawberry and coconut. I'll mix them together, and it's a Miami Vice, and that's one of the drink candles that I do is is a Miami Vice. And I'll actually, I'll actually take the container and I'll do half red and half white, and I'll scent it the half strawberry daiquiri and half pina colada to let everyone know after we're obviously seeing uh, aj make someone's life here but then i'm going to be sharing several images photos of other products that he makes uh, at some point in this video as well so definitely stay tuned for those so you can see all of his amazing work a couple different ways you can you could pipe you can do like a rose a flowery type uh dollop you get a closer okay. look a build up So how quickly did you learn how to do this part or did this come e fairly easily or take a lot of practice? Oh, uh, so how I learned, how I taught myself how to do this is uh, I went and got real cake icing and then a bunch of wax paper. And then I just, I just, just did it over and over and over. If you're just starting, I would actually take wax paper, just take wax paper and just practice on the wax paper. Yep. Do a little tiny dollops on the wax paper. And the good thing about uh, it's like little macarons the, there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good thing about doing it on the wax paper is it hardens and then you can take it right off of the uh, wax paper and then you can use it as decoration on other candles. About two hours for this to harden and 24 to 48 hours for it to cure. And I'll have like uh, these cupcake uh, plastic containers that I will uh, put them in. Time for the wicks. When I was wick testing these, I used a zinc core, um, let's see, a Eco 2, Eco 4, and Eco 6. And the best one that I, I, I found was the Eco 6. Also, if you put them in like tins, the wax melts and then creates a pool. And then it'll 
actually just keep oh. burning off that pool. Because you are uh, whipping your own wax instead of using a silicone mold, you could actually use uh, wax embeds that you can put into the whipped cream. And your embeds, do you make that out of the same as the base? Yes, I do. Uh, 6028 is actually absolutely perfect for embeds. If you use a um, just a paraffin for the embeds, it has this like white ashy, ashy yeah. like uh, yeah look to it, and it rubs up against each other, and just it doesn't look very well. Uh, 6028 is a mix between paraffin and 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 soy wax, so it has some oil content in there, but it's also hard enough to keep shape. So um, that's what I use the 6028s, and it, it's perfect, it's perfect. So then you can, because you're hand whipping the, the icing, you can just put it right in there. And then since the icing is soft, you can just push this right, push the wick right through the hole. And then do you do you use anything on the bottom um, over the wick like or uh, like over the wick tab or uh, no on the on the bottom I just push it push into it in. the six yeah push it into the 6028 but yeah that's that's how you make a dessert candle and uh, what what I tell my students is is the only limitation is your imagination uh, and there's like certain certain techniques that you have to learn first like for example the whipping there's crumbling uh that's a technique and then to make realistic embeds um i use candle dye this is a this is a wax green apple it looks 100 percent like a real like green apple <laughs> right on that apple um i'm assuming that's a mold are you pouring the green first and then the white or are you doing a different approach no, so this is how this is how I get that um, get that look. I actually hand paint my embed. For example, um, peaches. I'll do a base color. I'll do the base color, which is the white or the yellow. For the apples, I did the white. Mm -hmm. That was the base color. Um, and then I will actually take the take a brush, get a little tiny bit of candle dye. And then I will hand paint it to make it look like an actual peach. Yeah, you're right. That that gives us much more realistic effect than just pour, pouring different layers, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yes. You can't get gr any like gradient and shades and tones or anything like that with uh, with pouring li different layers. Yeah, hundred percent. Like that's that's a really good tip for anyone that's interested in doing this. I don't think that, I, I think the majority would have assumed they were poured in molds over layers. So that's a really, really good tip. But it takes a really long time to cure. Since um, candle dye is oil-based, it takes about four to seven days just to get it to the point where it won't come off on your finger when you touch it. One of the questions you were going to ask me is, what is the thing about candle making that you like the least? And yes. um, Liquid candle dye. That, oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's so great. The finished products are so great that it's worth it, in my opinion. Correct. Absolutely correct. I, I use I'll use block dye when I can, but then when it comes to um, efficiency, liquid dye is definitely the best. Yeah, silicone molds. I use a company called um, Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds Advanced Materials. And they, they actually do like FX stuff for movies. Anytime you see like a body double or a, a silicone mold, um, like a fake hand or something like that, all the materials that you get uh, are from the, like Reynolds. And Reynolds is a Reynolds is a authorized authorized reseller of Smooth On. Smooth On has a lot of silicone products. Okay. And the product that I use is a, a silicone rubber. And it's a platinum platinum cure. There's a 10 cure and a platinum cure. And I use um, Dragon Skin 10 NV. You can literally just, just use the silicone and a Tupperware and you can make your own silicone mold. Okay. These are blackberries. These are models that I made uh, out of wax. And I secured it to the bottom with the, um, with the silicone. And then I'll pour it on top. And yeah. then once it cures, pop them out of this. And that's how I get my embeds. 
I would agree, I think, with AJ, even though this is not really my realm, out of all the types of dessert candles I've seen, if I were going to start, I would certainly start with the cupcakes. They just seem like the you get some fundamentals, you get some practice, and they're not near as challenging as, as those other very complex desserts. Right. Once you get the piping down, it's, it's no problem. It's two different kinds of waxes, and there's a lot of companies out there on Etsy. Um, you can also go to thecandlechef.com, although I'm not selling the embeds right now, but there's a lot of companies out there that actually make the embeds and, and sell the embeds. So you can get any type of embed. You can get cherries, strawberries, uh, blackberries, peaches, apples. You can get any kind of embeds. Thing. It's really difficult. To get realistic ones. I'm a perfectionist and I, I want it to look like the real thing. So yeah, I, uh, I, I've definitely seen some that they look, they look fine. They look decent, uh, better than I would be able to do, but I've never quite seen the realism of the ones that I've, I've seen you make. So. I want to show you this um, beautiful cake that I did. Oh yeah, man. I've seen some of these before and they just, they're amazing. Along the lines of piping, uh, you can actually do something like this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. This oh. is a three tier cake, it has the strawberry embeds. It also has all the, the, the piping decoration. I actually iced it like a regular cake. And then I did the, the pipe dollops. And then on top of that, you can actually decorate it with uh, mica. A lot of people sometimes use it in the wax, but I don't like using it in the wax because you don't get that same look, that, that shine, uh, as if you were to uh, just do a little bit on, on the surface. Yeah, that's incredible. How long did that take you? This one took me about uh, two days. Wow. About eight, eight hours total. So this one's a, a, a display, but you, normally I would put like wicks in there and you can actually burn it. This is one of my new embeds. I use real, I use real blueberries for my models, and uh, so they actually look like real, real yeah. blueberries. Those look one hundred percent real. <laughs> if you're gonna get started in dessert kettles, invest into these stickers that says "not edible." <laughs> I have to get the non-edible um, uh, stickers. I have to get. Uh, put it on the labels. I put it on the glasses. I like everything, and, and even the care card. Keep them away from kids and, and animals and pets. But yeah, uh, especially like the Oreos. They smell. I I I fragrance the Oreos with uh, with chocolate and buttercream, and they smell exactly like real Oreos. Hey everyone, before we jump into the rest of this video and get back to those questions with AJ. I wanted to address something that has been asked of me before, and I think this is a great time to talk about it real quickly. And that is, AJ talked about using embeds and different parts of a candle besides the normal just wax and fragrance and wick. So if you're adding things to your candle, particularly if you're making something like dessert candles and you're using little embeds, well, you create those embeds first and then they become part of your normal candle. And I've been asked a lot in the past, when you have other parts that go into your final recipe, how do you handle that? How do you handle the inventory? How do you account for that as part of your recipe? How do you track the cost of those different parts that go in your, into your candle? Um, and those are often referred to as like components. And many of you know that I use a program called Crafty Base, and I have other videos on the channel that you can find in the description below if you want to check it out. And I use that software to create my recipes, to track my my orders, my expenses, my inventory, and a lot of things. But the reason I bring it up in this video is because that is also how you can track different components of a final product. Uh, many cases, those are called sub-assemblies. So in the case of a dessert candle, for example, you have your base recipe, but you make parts of that recipe separately. So you want a way to be able to track all the different blueberries or strawberries or raspberries or cherries that you make first, and you make those as a batch. You, you create raw materials into those embeds first, and that is your component or your sub-assembly. Then later, when you make your final dessert candle, you add those other components that you've already created into this new fun finished product. So you're really creating several products first, that then all become a different separate product. And Crafty Base is great. In fact, it has a product section where you create your final products, 
but it has a component section where you create these, these sub-assemblies, these components first, that eventually go into another final product. So that has been asked of me many times, and because we're talking about embeds and different components like that in this video, I thought this is a great time to mention that again. We can go into a lot more further detail in future videos or Q&As if anyone has any questions about how to do that, but I just wanted to share with you that there is a great way to handle that inside of CraftyBase. And again, in the description, you can find more information about CraftyBase, how to sign up for a trial, how to try it, and check out other videos on the channel if you're interested. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention that. Let's get back to the rest of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little demonstration of uh, AJ, the candle chef, making us some cupcake dessert candles. Uh, like I said and, and uh, before is I'm going to share some other photos as well um, at some point in this video, if I haven't already, and I'll probably show them again at the end of some other examples of the great work that AJ does. It's impeccable. The, the, they look so realistic. They're so good. Um, I think you guys will see that for yourself. But what I want to do now is get into some questions with AJ, just because I'm sure a lot of you are, have questions about, you know, how we how we got started, how long he's been doing it, just some questions that may have popped in your mind while you're watching that demonstration. So I've got a list of things here. Do you have anything you want to share before we get started on some questions here? I started I started candles with two hundred dollars, a flea market and a dream. That's how I got started. Yeah, that's, I, you know, honestly, I think that's how a lot of people get started. They want to do something and they've just got a little bit of a budget to work with. Um, and they just, you just got to find a way to make it work. Yes. I always tell my students, um, learn hard, work hard, achieve, and then pay it forward. Exactly. And my favorite part was that last part. After you learn and, and you've mastered something or not, you don't even have to master it, something. Once you feel like comfortable, like you have something you can add and share, that's, that's great to pay it forward. So I'm with you there. So you may have mentioned this before, but how long now have you been making candles? I started uh, in 2017. Um, that's when I lost my job at the customer service and I just dove right into candle making. Okay. So you're on your roughly five years, basically. Five years. Yep. Okay. Well, one of my favorite TV shows is, is um, anything. Well, he has a lot of them, but one of my idols is Chef Gordon. Chef Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. I love food. I love the culinary world. And I love candles. I love wax. I love the fragrances. And I love the, the zen and, you know, the feeling you get with candles. So I put it all together. And I love art. And I put it to all together. And that's 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 how I got dessert candles. I'm, I'm assuming you probably don't yell at your students the way Gordon does, though. <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> Although it's probably entertaining, but uh, so speaking of speaking of TV shows, didn't want to forget to ask this, but a lot of people probably are not aware. Uh, I was aware that you did this, but you were actually on a, a recent TV show, sort of like a contest reality show, sort of like a baking show for dessert candles. And uh, I want to I want to hear a little bit about that from you. What's interesting is. Um, ironically, I, I got invited to that. It is not my realm. And when I got the email, I was like, this is interesting. This would be fun, but I know better people for this than me. And, uh, you would have already probably already heard from them, but I actually threw them your name. <laughs> and I was like, if you haven't contacted AJ, the candle chef, make sure you do that. That's a better fit. So let, let's hear a little bit about, about that show and how that went for you. Cause I'm sure that was exciting and really unique opportunity for a candle maker. Yes, that was such a good opportunity. I got the invite. Um, I actually got like 25 messages saying, hey, 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 there's a TV show. They want dessert candles. I applied for it. I didn't think I was going to get it because it was a TV show. But uh, Jill, the executive producer, called me and she goes, well, yep, we want you. <laughs> so they flew me out to um, California and it, it's called Meet Your Maker Showdown. And the reason why they call it Meet Your Makers is because they had not, they didn't only have candle makers, they had candle makers, they had soap makers, they had um, artists that did things with um, acrylic paints, and they also had like glass makers, and they had each episode like features a, a different craft. And it's to spotlight craft like ours, like candle making. Um, to spotlight and show to the world uh, how much passion, how much love, how much work that we put into our craft. 
a handcrafter that handcrafts a candle, they don't know what went into that. They don't right. know like the research it takes to get the perfect wax, the perfect wick, uh, the right amount of fragrance, the temperature that you're putting the fragrance in. They don't know all the science behind it that we put into it. And this show actually featured all of that stuff. That was so cool. Yeah, yeah, really cool. I think the majority of, of candle makers obviously make standard, you know, container candles, pillar candles, things like that. Um, and so the majority of viewers on here are going to be the same. But I think one distinction for everyone to kind of realize is well, one one is about making, you know, kind of a, a line of candles, products, easy to retail, easy to do large volume. And then there's the other side of things where it's more artistic and and you're not pumping out hundreds of candles at the exact same time. You're putting a little bit more time into each one. There's going to be higher price points. Uh, it's it's just a whole different world. It's it's like it's like different types of baking, in my opinion. So there's definitely a place for both of them. Uh, but they're they're certainly unique from one another. It's about a lot about branding and your label and finding a niche. A niche really helps um, finding your market. But the other good thing about um, a, a market that many think is saturated is saturated usually means there's a lot of demand. And so you don't have to get 20 percent of the market to be successful. You can get one one thousandth of the market and still be very doing very, very well. I do want to warn people, though, if you do dessert can. One, it's costly to get into because there's a lot of different elements to them. There's a lot of different uh, things that you have to get. For example, silicone molds. When I first started doing the silicone molds, I would get one silicone mold for cherries. And it's like, okay, well, I'm tired of doing cherries. I want strawberries. So I got another silicone mold. Well, silicone molds are like $50, $50 a pot. Yeah. And it, I mean, once you start getting silicone molds and you need at least like 50 or 60 silicone molds for dessert candles, that's that's a big price tag right there. Another thing um, for uh, dessert candles, there there is a lot of learning. There's a big learning curve. Um, you have to learn the different waxes. You have, not only do you have to learn the waxes, you have to learn the wax textures, which you don't normally have to learn sure. in container candles because... Uh, 444 soy wax has a, a has a little oily um, texture that you want in whipped cream, but you don't want it in a pie crust shell or something like that. Right, right, exactly. You got to know the ingredients in in your recipe, just like baking. Very, very yeah. similar. And I'm glad you touched on the pricing because if it were me, and, and you can tell me your thoughts here as the expert, but if it was me and I was getting into into dessert candles. I wouldn't try to do too much at once. It would be too expensive and too difficult. I would start with one product and, and kind of be like, my business is cupcake candles, right? Get really good at that. And then once you start having some revenue coming in and sales coming in and you've gotten good at it, it's a little easier to start spending more money to start branching out. But I think a lot of people sometimes are so over eager. They try to do too many things at once. I suffered from that when I first started. So that would probably be my warning. And that's probably as a general rule, I think, though. So... What I teach, um, I have the perfect solution for people getting started in, in dessert candles. You go to a flea market and you get a booth at a flea market uh, or a pop-up shop or something like that. Uh, you start out with one product like I did, which was the drink candles. With the profits that you get from the drink candles, then you buy another silicone mold that makes yeah. makes makes it possible for you to make a different kind of candle. You, as long as you're budgeting and managing your money correctly and yes. only a certain percentage of your profits to, to build onto your repertoire, then, then you're doing it right. Because otherwise, if you're just keep on investing back into, you're never making any money. Next question I had was, what would you say, what dessert do you sell the most of? Um, so the most popular can, uh, dessert candle out there right now is, well, is pies. It's like a steady popular. One of my most popular recently and trendy is the fusion candle, where I actually fuse gel wax and soy wax into a marbly, swirly drink candle. I use two different waxes. The designs are like contrasting. You get swirls and stuff. Yeah, like I'm, that. I'm kind of imagining almost like a 
cosmopolitan or sherbert looking type candle or i don't know yeah. but that's what's in my head i don't know if that's right or not but yeah i i have a, a tropical drink candle line it's fusion line I, I always do like cheesecake for the white part with the soy part and then like blueberry coconut mm. for the and I'll put, and then it's like a, a fusion between it. And one of them's, um, it's a, a tropical coconut blueberry fusion. And I absolutely loves it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy. It sounds complex too. So I can't imagine trying to make that. Where are you located for anyone that's curious? Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. All right. Typical day or week. What is it? What is it like for you as the candle chef? What's a typical day like? In the morning, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. I come on. I, I turn on my digi boils. I have three digi boils. Um, I have one for or two for a sixty twenty eight and one for four for four. I turn on my digi boils. I get my silicone molds ready and I start making embeds. So pretty much throughout most of the day, I'm making embeds. Yeah. Uh, that's like the most popular thing right now because everybody's getting into dessert candle making right now. So, and they want embeds. Um, right around two o'clock is when I start packaging everything up and getting everything ready for the orders. Um, and then I'll go to the, the post office. I'll drop all my orders off and then I'll come back and then I get, um, I'll prepare for my classes. I'll create something new and exciting and and stuff like that that's that's my my fun time that's my fun time yeah it's it, it can be really difficult to do all of it I, I know that's my biggest struggle i feel like i'm working 20 hours a day uh trying yes. to make and sell normal products especially if you've got large wholesale white label type of clients as well always packaging and shipping orders and making products by the time you get orders out you're having to make new ones and then you're trying to do educational content on the side youtube channel um whether courses classes it is it's exhausting 100 <laughs> percent to say the least and that's exactly why i'm downsizing and i want to focus more on the teaching yeah and your level of expertise on it is so good that it's it's worth educating others how to do it um because your the quality of your products are so good that uh, you, you, that's who you want to learn from as a maker, as a new maker, as someone that really, really knows what they're doing and can teach it well. I've had five years of mistakes and trial and error Yep, that I yeah. can pass. Yes. Exactly. A good teacher has made uh, more mistakes than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Any tips or advice for, for new candle makers that maybe we haven't already talked about? Start out as a hobby. That's, that's one, one tip. And don't bite off more than you can chew. Yes. That, that's the most important thing to, to do. And there's been three times, three times in my five years that I've bitten off more than I can chew. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming and it just eats at you. And it, it just, it, you lose, you lose some of the passion that you have for the craft if you bite off more than you can chew. If you're doing more than you can do, then yeah. No, I, I actually, I really like the advice of starting as a hobby these days, especially with the pandemic and people looking for side hustles. I think it's great that people want to get into something else and control their own income. Uh, I think that's great. Uh, but I do see a lot of people rushing right to business from day one. And you want to make sure you enjoy the process first, regardless of what type of candle you're making. You want to make sure it's something you enjoy doing. Plus, you need some time to grow and develop as a maker and making sure your products are quality. And yeah, just starting as a hobby, letting it turn into a business is, is definitely the, the right approach. I had no intentions of starting a business when I started making candles at all. Anyone that's seen one of my older videos, it's my origin of how I got started. Mine was a joke. It was a dare by my wife. It was it was a total <laughs> joke. I had no idea anything about candle making. So if you haven't seen that video and you want to check it out, uh, but uh yeah, I had no intentions of starting a business when I did either. So what's your favorite thing about running your own candle business? I love the creativity. I love the creativity, especially with dessert candles, because you literally can make anything um, with dessert candles. And, and it, it sparks your creativity and, and your artistic side. It's just weird how this like one event one day can just be life changing for someone yeah. that you go from a job that I don't know if you enjoyed it or not. But one day you have a job, the next day you don't. And then before you know it, 
you run in your own business for five years and just, it's been entirely different since then. So it's, it's really incredible what can happen. So if that's mo- not motivation for uh, anyone else, then I don't know what would be. <laughs> 40 years, I worked for somebody else selling a product that I didn't believe in and that I didn't like. And I dreaded going to work every day, 40, 40 years. And now, and now I wake up with a smile every single day. And I go out to Pinterest and, and I'm like, it's like art class. I'm going to art class every yeah. day. It's so cool. I love my job. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, I don't wake up with a smile on my face because I don't like to wake up. <laughs> what I don't get, I don't get very much sleep. I go to bed so late and I don't get much sleep. So when I do, when I finally get to close my eyes uh, and I hear alarm or any time in the morning, I got to get up. It's no smile for me. And I like what I do, but it's hard to get me going <laughs> in the morning. What is your most difficult product that in your line of products that you think uh, to make most difficult one? Uh, well, the most difficult candle that I've ever made was my anti-gravity cake. Anti-gravity so, cake. All right. I got to hear more about that. So I went out in Pinterest and I was looking at these uh, original unique cakes. And I saw this little cake with um, a bag of M&M's way up here and a stream of M&Ms coming down onto the cake. And it was just suspended in midair. Oh yeah. Okay. I know what you're talking about. I've seen one of those on one of those baking shows. Yeah. So I was like, I can do that. Hold my beer. (laughs) I I would have not even tried to tackle that. All the kits out there for the cakes were plastic and you can't use plastic for wax. um, Because when you're burning wax, it's going to melt the plastic and you create dioxins and all that stuff all mm-hmm. toxic so you have to use metal so i had to actually get a metal dowel rod and then i got like resin and made the resin uh into a moldable pliable thing um and then i stuck the dowel rod in there and i made the cake around it and i put this um uh, this glass container um and i had to fill it halfway up with chocolate and i made it look like a chocolate stream was coming down onto the cake that it took me a good two weeks to do that that candle yeah so now the question on everyone's mind is how in the hell did you wick that (laughs) oh uh so um on the cake so the, the, the chocolate stream was coming down, right? And I wanted to make it look like it was splashing. So I actually made a silicone mold for a splash that came up, you know, the- Okay, yeah. The, so I made that splash, but then I made that splash uh, detachable. Uh, and then I also made the dowel rod detachable. So it was on display as ev- everything's assembled. But if you want to light it, you take the glass and the stream off Hmm. and you light the bottom part. Interesting. So speaking of wicking, and this is this is my last planned question I had for you. But wicking, as almost everyone here will agree, and probably yourself, is is one of the most difficult things, if not the most difficult thing about candle making. Can you tell us a little bit about how you would tackle wicking with dessert candles? They're odd shapes. They got different layers. Sometimes you're using even different kinds of waxes. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you approach that. So yeah, wicking was one of the most challenging things for me to figure out because of the different sizes. You had whipped cream overflowing. You had pie crust that had different levels and stuff like that. So I come up with the Goldilocks method. So the Goldilocks method is I find three wicks. There's different wick series out there and you wanna start out with a baseline. So you match the series, the wick series with the wax type that you're using in the candle. And since I'm using multiple waxes in a specific candle, I usually go by whatever wax I'm majority using. That's that's how I start. And then the Goldilocks is I will find three wicks, one for small, medium, and large. For example, Eco's. Uh, Eco's, my, my small is Eco 4, and then my medium's Eco 8, and then my large is Eco 10. I'll find three wicks for each of the theories, and then I'll test those. And then 
um, on the dessert candles. And then whichever one burns the best, that's the one I go with. I, I imagine it's hard to get a perfect wick with what the kind of candles you make. I, I can't imagine trying to do that. It is extremely hard. There's so many different variables to think right. about. It go crazy. You go nuts. So I go with the Goldilocks. I just go with it. I go with the one that burns the best out of the three different wicks that I, I choose. Yeah, I have a um, I have a similar method for when I do testing. I don't have a, a name for it, but I do the same thing. I, I find baselines for waxes that uh, here's one or two series that I find most of the time work the best for this wax. And then I will yeah. start with three or more sizes of that. Or if there's two series that both work great, I'll even do two or three sizes of each of those series. And I just whittle them down. One thing I've always liked to do, which is probably less important with yours, but with the volume you'll do with container candles is I always like to have a backup wick too. Like uh, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll pick the best one. And then what's the second best one? Because sometimes, especially lately, last couple of years, it can be hard to get all your materials. So it's nice to have a backup material. So something I would recommend for anyone that's new to candle making. That's a good idea. Good idea. I'm going to leave all information uh, where people can find you in the description of, of the videos. Um, I'm going to leave some other footage, pictures, examples of other products you've made to share. Of course, if anyone has any questions or comments or feedback, I'd love to see it. I'm sure AJ would love to see it in the comments section below as well. Um, we both like engaging and, and sharing. And if you like this type of video of seeing another, uh, you know, master candle maker and, and what he does um, and interviewing him and seeing him work, uh, let me know, you know, give the video a, a like and, and let us know in the comments if you did really enjoy it. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I want to say thank you to AJ for being here. Appreciate it. It was such a joy to meet you. I'm such a big fan. I love your, I love your channel, Black Tie Barn. I love your channel. I love your, uh, the information. I love the passion that you're passing on to other people. Thank you for the, the kind words too about the channel and the feedback. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you enjoy the content. Um, I enjoy yours just as much. And I really enjoyed this. If you guys would like to learn how to make dessert candles, you can head out to my Patreon. I have an ongoing dessert candle school. I have live classes. I have recorded live classes. So if you'd like to learn how to make cupcakes, pies, drink candles, gel drink candles, fusion candles, anything in, in that realm, uh, come on out and visit me at, on, on my Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com and it's the candle chef. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And uh, thank you again, AJ. And uh, hopefully we can do this again here sometime soon. Maybe we'll do something a little different, maybe a different demonstration one day or something. Yeah, I, I have tons of candles I can show you. Yeah, I might try to do one myself one day with you too. So I'll, I'll send you a like it. Yeah, I'll send sounds, you a Sounds good. All right, AJ, I appreciate it. Bye, guys.